Ellis was unanimously re-elected to head the Republican conference today, and he's joining us tonight from outside the Senate chamber. Thanks very much for your time tonight, Senator. Thank, thank you very much, Liz. And congratulations on your win. Thank you very much. Well, what we saw earlier was a little bit of footage in which, in which you referred to yourself and your colleagues as in the majority. So I guess you consider this over. Well, we, uh, the conference did elect me to be the temporary president and majority leader uh, for the next two years. Th there, are, there are at least two races, the one against uh, uh, Senator Johnson and the one against Senator Antoine Thompson in, uh, in Buffalo, where our candidates are ahead more than the outstanding ballots uh, that yet have to be counted. So if every single one of them went to the Democrat, they, w they would still not prevail. Actually, that's interesting because you're leaving off there that third race. That's the 37th senatorial district. That's Susie Oppenheimer and Bob Cohen. Are you saying that that race is now too far away for the Republicans to win? No, I, I don't believe it is. And in, in fact, uh, Bob Cohen is now down by 285 votes. And I believe last week uh, or earlier in the week, he was down by well over 400. And there are about uh, over 2,000 ballots yet to be counted. And they have found some uh, serious uh, problems with the machines uh, in Westchester, which will be reviewed. But again, there are still over 2,000 ballots yet to be counted. And as the count has been going on, Bob has actually been picking up votes. Will you be asking for a full hand recount there the way Senator Craig Johnson did in the 7th? Well, you know, I, the, the, it's interesting. Uh, Liz, right now, Jack Martins is up uh, 431 votes. He actually went up 27 votes today. And when the, the machine count was over, he was, uh, 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 he was up by 415. So counting probably about 3,000 pieces of paper, uh, the difference now is, is he is up 16 votes. Right. I, I, okay. But what about in the 37th? Will you ask for a hand recount there? That's going to be up to the, uh, the, the, the Bob Cohen. Uh, he's the one that's the agreed party, and I indicated to him, you know, make sure that every vote is counted properly and every person that was entitled to vote, uh, that vote is counted. That's a decision they're going to make. But right now, uh, in, in the two districts, in Buffalo and in Nassau County, uh, we're up to such a point where if they got every other outstanding vote, they still could not win. Okay, will this be decided before the end of December like Andrew Cuomo would like to see it? Yeah, it, it, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, they, the two Democrats right now are just in a, in a delay process. I've indicated that the Senate Democrats right now have a 2.2 uh, at least million dollar deficit uh, within their campaign committee, a loan that's due on December 22nd. So I think part of this has to do with fundraising. But also, Paul, it is, they, they haven't come to the realization that the voters said they want to change and they want Republicans in charge of the, uh, the Senate. Okay, well, let's talk about what's happened today. Uh, last week, Senator Sampson, the Democratic conference leader, sent a letter to you and asked right. for some bipartisan cooperation in advance of this session day. Did you ever meet with him? Yeah, I met with him uh, today. Okay. And I indicated to him that we were prepared. Uh, to vote on certain bills, which we did. Right. I also indicated that we were prepared to pass the uh, a $315 million deficit reduction plan that the governor had come up, and they refused to bring it up for a, uh, a vote. Well, also, throughout the day, with negotiations, they again excluded us from any negotiations with the speaker or with the governor. So we're really not privy to the actual discussions, but we were prepared uh, to give votes to pass the deficit reduction plan. Okay, but in terms of the deficit reduction plan, the Senate Democrats are blaming the governor, saying that he actually didn't send bill copy, and, and there wasn't any bill copy available until right up until later in the afternoon. You were prepared to vote on these, on these cuts, despite the fact that you guys hadn't seen them? I, I think that we know that we have to cut $315 million. We know that they're going to be tough choices. And, and again, this is the dysfunction that has existed since the Democrats took control uh, of the Senate. And uh, they have been fighting with the governor for the last two years. Okay, so what exactly is going to be different when and if you take control? I mean, if you guys were in control today, what would have been different? Well, we would have had a uh, negotiations uh, with the governor 
that would have come up with a deficit reduction plan. Uh, but also, I should point out, Liz, one of the reasons why we have a deficit right now is for the last two years, all Democrat control, Senate, Assembly, and Governor, increased spending by $14 billion, over 10%. If that type of spending binge had not occurred, uh, we wouldn't be dealing with this end-of-year deficit that we have right now. Uh, it's so the, not, the wait, governor, you wait, know, wait, the wait, let me, is, let me just interrupt for just one second, I'm sorry. So it's not actually a question of a failure of revenue to be collected, because that's what Governor Patterson says. He says, for example, Indian uh, cigarette sales tax can't be collected because of legal action, and so that was money that you were counting on to improve the state's revenue picture. Is, well, do you not I, agree? I, I think many of the assumptions he made were incorrect uh, to get by uh, an election cycle, and that's why the Senate and the Assembly Democrats agreed to it. But e even if you collected um, you know, the, the 150 million, the, the, the deficit we have this year and also in the upcoming year is because of 14 billion dollars in additional spending. If that spending had not occurred, uh, we would not be in a deficit situation that exists right now. Okay, one of the things that uh, the Mayor Bloomberg and, and uh, particularly the downstate legislators, also the Patterson administration, said needed to get done today that did not was a, a, I'm, I'm going to use the shorthand of a bailout, although the governor says that's not what it is but for New York City, a restructuring for the New York City OTB. Well, now there's talk that you're going to actually be back here in two weeks. Is that true? I, I've, I've heard that Senator Sampson indicated that we probably will be back again within the next couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, the, the bailout of uh, New York City OTB uh, is really the way it's been negotiated. Again, we were excluded from negotiations, are going to hurt the regional OTBs uh, throughout the state and if they're hurt, the real property taxpayers are hurt because there's less revenue that goes from the OTB to the counties. Okay, so our, your conference then is going to be voting no on that, is that correct? Well, we would have voted no on the bill that came, if it had come to the floor today, and, and certainly I indicated that to the governor uh, and to uh, John Sampson, but it doesn't mean in the next week or 10 days a, a, an appropriate type resolution of the problem uh, can't uh, can't be negotiated. Okay, so you're open to negotiating some kind of different OTB bailout for uh, for the city gambling operation, and yeah. you're, it's possible that the Republicans then would it, be it, voting yeah, yes. It, it, it's still possible, but you know the the bailouts are, are costing taxpayers a lot of money. If it can be done in a way that taxpayers are not hurt, we'll be supportive. If it can't be, then we will not be supported. You know, one of the things, and there was a few one-house bills that got through today. One of them was the Judicial Pay Raise Commission. What, what, what made that pop all of a sudden at the 11th hour? Well, you know, I think, as you know, Liz, in the past, uh, judicial pay raises have, have been linked uh, to legislative pay raises. Right. Uh, I think that's absolutely wrong. I think it demeans the, the judicial system. And I'm glad that Governor Patterson put that on the agenda. Um, I've spoken to Judge Lippman about it in the past, uh, that there should be a separate commission that does that and, and take it away from the linkage that exists with the legislative pay raise. It's, I believe it's appropriate that uh, judges do get a raise. I don't believe it's appropriate that the legislature gets a raise right now with the difficult economic times that we have. But why, I'm just confused as to why it's appropriate for judges and not for lawmakers if neither of them have gotten a raise, including yourself, of course, for, well, for over know, a decade. You know, right, it's the linkage that I didn't think was appropriate, uh, basically trying to hold up the judicial system uh, for a pay raise for, for legislators. Uh, none of us have had a pay raise for uh, 11 years. I think 1999 was the last time there was a pay raise. Right. But right now, uh, you know, we have judges um, that have been on the bench for a, a number of years and law students coming out of making more than them when they go into some of the, uh, into some of the law firms. So we need a, a quality judiciary, but we also need to take it out of this legislative uh, uh, back and forth that exists concerning pay raise. And I, I think it's, it was a good move, a great reform. And would that also be appropriate, just quickly, for an independent commission to consider legislative pay raises as well, in your opinion? May, maybe someday down the road, but, but certainly not right now. Okay. Well, I'm going to refer to you as Senate Minority Leader Gene Skelos, but of course we have yet to see exactly how that's going to come out. In the meantime, I want to thank you very much. I assume thank the you. Senate is uh, not coming back tomorrow?
not, not the, I don't believe, well, no, we are not going to be here tomorrow, and I think the assembly is coming in at some point uh, to take up some of the bills. Okay. Thanks very much, Senator Deansfeld. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.